Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures review of this 2022 Nissan Armada SL with the Midnight package or Midnight Edition and the Armada comes with one engine the 5.6 liter V8 putting out something like 400 horsepower 413 foot-pounds of torque and it's a glorious engine it sounds so good and great power great torque it cruises excellent it tows pretty well i haven't towed with this exact armada but i have towed with others and even though it's paired to the seven speed still that seven speed is a great transmission i can't wait till they put the nine speed from the titan into it but as it is it's quite an excellent vehicle to drive this newer updated version has slightly different body lines well significantly different body lines i guess i don't know somewhere in there and same frame same engine same trans axles all that kind of stuff pretty much the same but it just seems slightly better tuned all around it's a little quieter a little smoother and we'll in the off-road section we'll get into the off-road capability of it and talk about how that compares to the old version if it's any better if it's the same or if it's worse and this one does have the uh, auto leveling rear suspension that's basically an airbag hook to the rear shocks that helps lift it up when it's put under load and uh, i'm not in a great spot to get a shot of that but anyway it's there and that auto leveling is only on the rear let's take a look under the hood real quick so there it is that 5.6 liter v8 and overall like i said love this engine gas mileage is the only downside to it and it seems to be getting better gas mileage this time around than in the previous armada that i had so maybe with this update they've done additional tuning there to give it a little bit better fuel mileage but i'm getting about 18 and a half miles per gallon right now and the previous one i think i was like 16 and a half so really not too bad for how big this thing is and it does come with plenty of the nissan safety features and all that stuff uh, the reason i say that is i saw some of it up there on the windshield but uh, i don't really use all that i'm not going to be a good source for how well it does compared to others but i do and love the fact that nissan includes that across lineup in many of their vehicles uh, maybe even all of them have like the surround view safety features and it does have the surround view cameras as well that go with that interestingly enough i thought these were made in japan but their final assembly point is in los angeles per the uh, window sticker monroni which i don't have with me now but i can pull, pull it up on my phone let's take a look inside starting here up front it's a 10-way power driver seat that's the lumbar and then yeah all the other stuff there and the headrests i've noticed on a lot of vehicles the headrests stick out really far these ones are not intrusive at all they're not bad i do like the leather here i don't know it could be considered like a maybe poorly done because it's got all those wrinkles but i actually like the look of the wrinkles uh, on there but yeah nice leather and everything in this sl trim and the midnight edition of course and the uh steering wheel you move it up down in and out with power there this new screen does stick up out of the back and let me turn all this stuff off it still i believe still maintains the vents that are in there that blow up onto your face and i'm not 100 percent on that i know the old one had it that might just be for the speaker i haven't been able to feel that vent this time but I haven't been using the air conditioner either. It's been cold, so I've been, just been using the heater. And I did like that feature on the previous generation, but I haven't, like I said, haven't needed that feature on this one because it's been winter time. I haven't uh, turned on the AC at all. I'm at a half a tank of fuel. Says I still have 328 miles of range. So you're getting 650 miles out of this. If you're cruising on the freeway, you're doing even better than that. Let me see if I can clear this warning and doesn't want to go away i do have the brake on still but 
Uh, anyway, we'll see if that goes away so we can go through some of the, there we go, some of the features here. And I, I wasn't able to find an off-road pages and I don't think there's a trans temp gauge anywhere either. So when you're towing, which this one does have a trailer brake controller here, that's built in obviously very nice to have that more vehicles should come with those standard i love now that these are showing up on suvs but i don't see anywhere to get the trans temp which is very important when you're towing and hauling so you have your coolant temperature your oil pressure voltage which are all key gauges but i don't see anywhere for the trans temp and maybe if i can scroll down through here no uh, same thing with this screen. So you can use the touch screen up here. You can use the buttons down here But if I hit the menu here Go to info This is not Anything in here for you know looking at the vehicle settings or any of that uh, vehicles uh, What am I trying to think of here? Uh, conditions maybe is what I'm looking for but yeah, I'm not seeing like anywhere where I can get that extra information that I would like. Down here, oops, even on the info page. Sorry, let's go back to the map there. Turn the radio on. So the radio, I like this, how it's split like this. And you can change that in the settings. If you go back to here and go in the settings, you can change, adjust the screen however you want it. But uh, I like it how it is. And it's a very clear screen. Right now it's indirect sunlight. I hope you can see it well, but me as a driver, I can see that really well, even in direct sunlight. It just is a really clear, nice, high quality screen. And the cameras are also pretty clear. I do wish that this would take up the full screen and give you maybe a little more clear view, but I mean, it takes up some of it and gives you enough for most situations when you're off-roading. It's nice to have more view than that. And I also do love that there's a dedicated camera button. So you don't have to go searching through the screen to find the cameras. Sometimes you're pulling into a parking spot, you're in drive, you need the camera up quick so you can make sure you're not gonna hit the curb, you're not gonna get the car next to you. And you can just hit the camera button. This is the front passenger wheel and easily see where the position of the vehicle is. Um, it also will pull up those cameras when the parking sensors pick up that you're close to something. So that's another great feature. Once you get close enough that you might hit something anyway, it'll go ahead and pick that up. And here are those vents that I was looking for earlier. So let me turn that back on. Yeah, so this does have the vents that come out of here and blow up onto your onto your face. So I don't want that on while we're talking. Underneath here is the wireless charging and a 12 volt. I don't know, it looks nice closed, but it's almost a waste of space and kind of gets in your way when you're trying to reach your phone in there and everything. I don't know if I like that or not. It is nice having the wireless charging, obviously, and the indicators here. So even if you have your phone in there and close it, it'll show right there that it is charging. And then of course you have a USB-C and a USB-A right there. And now you can see my phone's charging in there. Again, try the brake controller right where it should be. That's a nice, easy spot to reach. Not too bad. And I love having this down here too. You can rest your arm on the armrest and control everything there. Cup holders up top, we have the sunroof and this is just the small, normal size sunroof, I guess, which I don't use sunglass holder. And that's, that thing's thick. So you can fit some real sunglasses in there. And of course your lights. So center console is pretty small, but I think it's really well insulated. It's set up to be the fridge and it has the power for the inverter in it as well. And we'll take a look at the inverter in the back. And it also has access from the rear. Maybe we should look at that from the rear seats to get in there, especially if you're using that for a fridge, you can put drinks in there and have good access. So really not bad overall. And it, it, they do give the driver all the handles as well as the passenger. So it does come ready for those of you that need the assistance climbing in, or if you're an off-roader, I drive with my hands on the wheel when I'm off-roading, usually both hands on the wheel. 
Um, but when you're bouncing around, it's nice to have those handles. Or when you're climbing in, it's also nice to have those handles. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. Let's take a look in the second row. And this one does have the illuminated kick plates. Those, in my opinion, are not worth the cost. They're very cool to have, but they're pretty expensive for what you get from them. And again, back here, you have a handle here and a handle up here. And it's a big roomy cabin. The windows are really big. Plenty of view out of the windows and tons of space here. So, and we'll talk about that more in just a second, but one downside to this vehicle is that the seats do not fold, or sorry, they do not slide. And I thought there was an inverter here. There, there it is. So that's the plug for the inverter and a couple more USBs there and a 12 volt. Obviously your rear seat climate controls are here and that's your fridge access, if it were equipped with the fridge, but access to the center console in the front. This center console in the rear, fairly spacious. Right now it's just the car seat clips that go over there. And I did put two car seats here in the middle row and one in the back. And even for the child in the back, five-year-old, it was a little tight right here for their legs. It couldn't really fully extend their legs easily unless I have this almost in the upright position. So it was not as comfortable as it could be. But again, I've got like eight inches here almost of room. And it would be nice if these seats could slide forward, but they just pivot right here. So let's go ahead and take a look in the next row back. And I do also like the vents are up here. Um, I know I've mentioned this on other vehicles, but having the vents up here makes it so you can get to the car seats that are in the middle row that are rear facing. Otherwise rear facing car seats, when the vents are down here, they just blow into the back of the car seat. So both front and rear facing car seats and passengers can get air from there. And so right here is how you fold the seat. And that's all you can do with it. So there's no rails or anything to slide on. I would love it if they had this tumble design and a slide design. And then I've got this down right now, but let's go ahead and put that up. And on this side, I can barely slide in over here. I'm sure you can see how tight that is, but I mean, I fit, but it's pretty tight. And I, I mean, I did have that down. So lift the headrest up, angle the seat back a little bit. And there's definitely enough room for adults back here, but it's really tight. As you can see, my head is just barely clearing that. I'm five foot 10. So if you're six feet tall, you're gonna have a hard time with that. Just not a ton of room back here. But if they were to change the design and have those seats slide forward, then you would totally have plenty of room. Four cup holders here in the back, but no USB charging ports. So two cup holders on either side and no center armrest, which is fine for the third row. Let's take a look in the cargo area. One thing, this is a tall SUV, but here that's about chest height for me, maybe a slightly lower. And you should be able to open this glass separate and reach down in there. So it's not so tall that you can't do that, but they don't have that option where you can open the rear glass. So that, that's something that really should be added. So many vehicles don't have that right now and it's kind of a pain. So let's take a look back here. And you don't have a ton of space back here. I mean, it's okay, it's a decent amount. It's probably just under two feet. And, but if you have this people in the back and the seats reclining a little bit, you'll lose some of that. So not a ton of space back here. So it would be really nice if you could lift stuff over the glass, set it down in here and not have it roll out. If you got some basketballs or something, soccer, because this is a soccer mom's car, I guess, put your soccer balls back here to get them out. You've got to let them all just come rolling out of the back. So they really should implement some way where that rear glass can open. And the glass is big. I like that it has good visibility all the way around this vehicle with the exception of this corner 
the glass is really big and it gives you great visibility, but they really should have it open up separate from the rest of the rear hatch. 112 volt outlet back here and a bunch of little tie down spots. So there, that's probably for the cargo net. Um, this one doesn't have, you can fold the seats, obviously. Two more anchor points there, one on that side, one on the other. Anchor points here and here, and then underneath is more storage area. That's for the front license plate mount. And underneath this is your tire changing equipment and access to your uh, winch cable, I guess, or winch to drop your rear tire underneath there. Uh, anyway, all your tire changing tools are there. There's a little bit of additional space if you want to keep uh, jump box, jumper cables, whatever else underneath here. And this floor mat is nice to have, but it also does kind of block access to that and makes a little bit of a pain to get in there. Um, we'll, we'll fix that later because... Anyway, there we go. All right, you can lock it from back here or just close it. And then down here is the receiver hitch. It's got these that you unscrew, pop out, and then you can pop that cover off with your hitch behind there and your seven pin wiring. I do like and dislike this because it looks really nice as it sits, but it just gets in the way. If you're towing somewhat regularly, you've got to take it out, put it somewhere. You don't want to lose it because it doesn't look as good without it in there, all the angles and stuff like that. So uh, I don't know. There are some designs that maybe could integrate the hitch a little better where it's, you can see it all the time, but this does look really nice. The 2022 Armada, after their rework in 2021, has minimal changes for 2022, but I haven't driven the 2021 model year. So this thing compared to the previous generation of Armada is much quieter and that's my perception of it based on what I remember, but my daily driver is a 99 Jeep Cherokee and it's really loud. So I'm wondering if my perception skewed, but that was like one of the first things I noticed when I was driving this thing. We're going almost 80 miles an hour right now and it's just so quiet. You get a little bit of wind noise, but just minimal amounts. You don't really even have to turn up the radio when you're at speed. Another thing that's really nice about it is it's really easy to accelerate in this thing. So it just moves. It'll get up and go. And I mean, yeah, it took a second to downshift there, but in my normal driving, I never have to downshift on the freeway. Um, going up normal overpasses and that kind of stuff, it just doesn't need to downshift. There's plenty of torque from this V8 something like 413 foot pounds of torque so easy just to cruise along unloaded when you're towing obviously it's a different story but unloaded there's just so much power in this thing that there's no problem keeping freeway speeds also the ride's very smooth and i believe it was pretty smooth before in the previous generation but it just feels like it's maybe put together a tiny bit better in this one. Just maybe some small tweaks and stuff. You know, it uses the same frame, same engine, same transmission. It's the same setup as before with a different body, the updated interior, which is a little nicer and all that. But it really does drive just a little bit better in almost every way, it seems like. The steering is a little bit light but that makes the maneuvering at low speeds really easy. On the freeway, it stiffens up a little bit and tracks straight. There's no issues with tracking or anything like that. So it does really well, has a family road trip vehicle. It's an excellent vehicle for that. I really enjoy the Armadas. I've always loved the Armada since they switched to the patrol platform really enjoyed being in the armadas but this one is just a step nicer than the previous ones and the other ones i've driven are platinum trims and this one is the sl trim so it's not even the top level trim 
although it's nicely appointed it's got heated leather seats and stuff like that but it's still it's not the very top trim and it drives just that much better than the last generation so i really enjoy driving this thing on the road as i said it's a great vehicle fuel mileage actually hasn't been that bad so you can see i'm at 18.5 i've been letting it warm up because it's 15 degrees in the morning it's been around that colder than that some days warmer some days but let it warm up for three to five minutes before i leave and um some of the idling during my testing and stuff like that a couple of full throttle runs so it was at about 18.8 .8 for this tank of fuel which they fill it up before they drop it off to me and i've lowered that a little bit down to 18.8 .8, but really not too bad uh, i've always thought the armada got terrible gas mileage and it kind of did in the past but now this one seems to be doing just a little bit better than the previous generation so again they've probably done some minor tweaks and changes to it and just made it just a little bit better on fuel mileage as well compared to the previous i don't want to say generation but maybe a previous model of it i don't know because this one is a new generation but not really a new generation it's a facelift generation so but I would say it's had some decent updates. Also, it still has the automatic leveling rear suspension. So the shocks on the rear have the air suspension airbag thing built into them. But you're not able to get the HBMC hydraulic body motion control in the Armada as far as I know. So this one does not have that for sure. And I know you can get it on the certain levels of the infinity qx80 and of course the nissan patrol has that but on the armada um, you can't get that and i haven't been able to test that it's similar to toyota system and i'm drawing a blank on what it's called right now uh, but their hydraulic uh, system that helps really stiff sway bars when you're on road but when you start to articulate it opens up and lets you have more articulation similar to disconnecting a sway bar but it does it through hydraulics and other methods and actually might even perform a little better than that because with the hydraulics it can help push a wheel down and the nissan version of that is pretty similar as well with the hydraulic body motion control it can help improve articulation improve on-road stability and all that stuff i can't wait till i get a qx80 with that in it to test and i wish they offered that on the armada as well three two one go has four wheel drive auto this is just the normal drive mode Six, 60 sorry i saw 50 and called it 60 so i don't think it got it there we go all right three two one go faster that was seven seconds so pretty good overall but that was downhill instead of uphill we're still 47 ish 100 feet i think 46 47 so not bad at all so now i have the air on and i have that air coming out of here and it actually hits the back of this screen just as much as it gets by it so kind of a bad design with the screen sticking up right in front of the air coming out of there but i can still feel it and it's nice to have Thank you for watching Engine Adventures review on this 2022 Nissan Armada SL Midnight Edition. Very, very nice vehicle. I love this thing. Comes in at about $62,000. I'll put that up on the screen because I don't have the Monroney with me, but it has the Midnight package, and I think that was around three grand. I'll put that up on the screen as well. It comes with all this blacked out features and some additional stuff inside as well. The black roof rails and uh, it had the illuminated kick plates and a few other things. Uh, bringing the total, I think around $62,000. Again, I'll put that up on the screen. And really great vehicle overall. It rides so smooth, it's quiet, it's powerful. It can tow 8,500 pounds. I'll put that up on the screen as well. And it tows pretty darn well. I've towed a 6,000 pound travel trailer with it and I've towed about a 4,000 pound boat. Of course, had no problem with either of those. 
it's such a capable vehicle and maybe not the most fuel efficient but really it seems like this year they're doing better with them than in the past because i've been getting about 18 and a half maybe a little bit better when i'm not uh letting it idle or doing off-roading but really not too bad at all for a vehicle this size if you liked what you saw be sure to hit the bell well first of all subscribe then hit the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos and give me a thumb up and also be sure to comment down below with any questions comments your experiences and with anything you want to see and if you gave me a thumbs down be sure to comment down below and let me know why thank you for watching have a great day